is the shortage of toilet paper. And in fact, it's gotten so bad that the country has urged the public to avoid hoarding the oh. delicate stuff. I mean, they're running off, they're flying off the shelves, what they're saying in some of these convenience stores right now. Yeah, they're gone. I mean, yeah. you look at some of these pictures across these supermarkets in Taiwan, it's just, and I guess in a lot of ways, it could be an indication, really, of people's attitudes towards not just not just toilet paper, obviously, but, yeah. but generally price levels. Yeah, let's bring in our chief Asia economics correspondent, Enda Kern, to talk a little bit more about this. Is this just about toilet paper, or is inflation really coming back with a vengeance? <laughs> well, um, maybe in this case, it's just about toilet paper, but more generally, though, I think the point that a lot of economists are making is that um, there's a lot of nervousness out there at the moment about um, that inflation is going to return with a vengeance, to quote Paul Tudor. And uh, there's a feeling that an incident like this is a reminder of just how quickly inflation expectations can change. Because remember, the global backdrop is economic growth at its fastest since 2011. We have labour markets tightening by the most in decades and signs of companies spending more money, some nascent signs that wages are increasing. So people are nervous that inflation will come back and this is why they jump on an episode like this. Yeah, I mean, shortages obviously indicate that in, in, in economic terms, I guess, uh, uh, production is, 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 is surpassing capacity, in other words, right? You know, we talk about output gaps mm -hmm. and inflation here. So it's toilet paper in Taiwan. Are we seeing, I guess, similar instances across Asia? I mean, what are similar products we can look at here? People do point to certain episodes, but on, on the Taiwan uh, case, some people blame it on what's happening with um, China's effort to clean up its own environment, yeah. <clears throat> how that's resulting in... They're also talking about uh, forest fires in Canada that's affecting that's right. pulp prices as well. Yeah, that's right. No, that's exactly right. And, um, and in fact, if it is the case that China is part of it, it shows you the importance of China's swing from PPI deflation to um, PPI inflation, True. how important that is. But more generally, though, um, yeah, again, while it does, is, an, is an example of how inflation expectations can turn, we do get episodes like this, whether it's tomato prices in India or whether it is the price of eggs or pork in China. We do occasionally get spikes and policymakers look through it. So. so is this still kind of a stretch to kind of put this as toilet paper to eggs or, you know, and then link it to actually some type of policy shift from central banks in Asia? Yeah, for now, I think um, <laughs> no one's calling a major dramatic policy shift <laughs> just, just on toilet gate, per se. <laughs> toilet gate! But, but um, I, I think, though, it just, it just speaks to the idea that people are nervous. People right. are watching for episodes yeah. like this. And they're certainly watching emerging markets because, remember, it doesn't take a lot for conditions to turn. And it's episodes like this, be it food or something else, that does set off inflation. And that's why people kept an eye on this story. It really is. And, you know, if, if, if there's any single risk out there that a lot of the analysts we've spoken to say, it's inflation. Yeah. Right? That's the thing that's going to, I guess, pardon the pun here, flush all these gains down the toilet. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can pardon that.